we say to every band, you know, we're excited to meet you, it's, it's nice to have you here, but I have to say for me personally, uh, you guys are the ones I was the most excited about this year. I've never seen you in concert before. Plus, I've never seen anybody uh, with a harmonica using quite so much of their being to power the sound. We don't do anything effortless. Um, nothing comes easy. <laughs> well, I, I was really looking forward to seeing you guys play because you. of your because of your voice and because it sounds so much to me like like in my head I picture there's always a big smile when you sing and there is. Yeah. And I was I was delighted to see it, and uh, and what I love is that your songs for the genre are so filled with hope and with a worshipful, just the lyrics are so kind and and encouraging and comforting, uh, but the genre is is also you know not really mellow. There's an author uh, Donald Miller that wrote this book. We do a couple of jazz, and we we got to meet him. He was a fan of the band. And he was talking about the song. I he was said, I got your record, and he's like, I was sure that I was going to meet, like, a guy that's, like, 40 and been divorced four times. And I was like, I just thought it was really funny, you know, that that's, and that's kind of, I think we try to put as much um, of the real stuff in, in the records as we can. And for us, it's like, when you listen to an album, you know, as much as there is a hopeful kind of thing, it's it's all about the stuff that's not, because it, it makes that stuff real, you know, it makes it relevant. Not, that's not how people's lives are, they're not always good. You know, sometimes I feel like when I'm listening to Christian radio, sometimes, you know, it's like, it's a little overkill. It's like Barney singing or something, you know what I mean? It's like, and so for us, it's really important for us to put the real stuff out there and be like, look, sometimes, you know, it's going to stink. You know, sometimes you're restless, sometimes you don't know what to do. And there's, we don't have an answer for that. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, there is a, obviously an ultimate hope. But I feel like when people uh, hear the records, it's easier than for them to believe, you know, the track four when they heard track one, two, and three, you know? And um, so that's something we definitely feel is very important. Yeah. Well, you set forth an excellent example in your yes. songs, lyrically, of what to do when when your life gives you the hard stuff. Yeah. Because your songs, even even like Wash by the Water, sure. which I understand was written about, you know, some pretty tough stuff, yeah. but the song doesn't feel depressing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you turn right. it around, which I think is right. a great, just a great, you know, witness for people to yeah. be able to watch. Definitely. It's, I mean, the song was written about my dad had gone through some really difficult things. I think the reason we were able to write the song that way um, was because we were so far removed from it. Yeah. We had gone through the thing when I was probably 16 or 17, I think. So several years had come by before you know, I started writing the song. And when the chorus came along, it made me think of the situation. You know what I mean? So it was a really cool, I think, a moment for us and a breakthrough for us in terms of, because the song also style-wise is not like what you hear on the radio. And, and a lot of a lot of Christian radio was very not willing to play it early on. It was kind of like, whoa, this sounds like this sounds like gospel or whatever. You know what I mean? Like this is not CCM. Um, so, I mean, to their credit, to and to the fans' credit, like people plugged the way at it, people called in and really related to it. And I think that's really what we have to offer. You know, it's not going to be the most shiny, polished thing, but um, don't polish it. Yeah, it, it's good this way. Don't <laughs> don't go there. Thank you. Well, growing up, uh, did you guys always? play music well together? Did you always want to as brothers? No, I don't think I was cool enough for Bear until <laughs> uh, maybe 18, 19. Yeah, it's, it was, I mean, it's not cool. Your younger brother's not that cool in high school. You, know, <laughs> I mean, you don't want to hang out with him or anything. You know? um, now I'm a lot cooler than he is. So yeah. <laughs> um, so whenever I got to college, I think it's when we started the band. He wasn't even playing guitar at the time. And, um, and then so we kicked the guy out and made room for Bo whenever. Yeah. It came time. Uh, yeah, so it's been cool. I mean, we've we've spent our, our the last ten years together doing this, so it's pretty pretty wild. Really. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, we're really really looking forward to August twenty fifth for the new album, The Outsiders. We've already the first time we played Lamb Down, I got a phone call from from a lady. She was like, "What was that?" And cool. and she was so disappointed that it wasn't out yet, of course. Right. But uh, tell us about that song. Yeah, it's, it was a song that I think I just kind of messed around with and, and sound check a lot, but it wasn't a full song. And, and I think we got in the studio and we were probably recording something else. And I pulled out the riff and then we were like, I would just write some lyrics to that. And I think the band all got together. It was one of the, one of the songs that the, the whole band kind of chipped in and, and wrote. And it literally, we came out with the lyrics in, uh, I don't know, probably five minutes or less. Um, it, we, we wanted to write it to how the song made us feel, you know. I think it's got a little bit of that gospel vibe, a little bit of swampy, 
uh, character to it, and it's a you know it's a come all who are thirsty kind of song, and um, and so it's our our spin on it. And we, yeah, we threw on some stops and claps and had a really good time recording. Yeah, it's really it's really fun. So that's been a cool. Thing. I mean, it's it's been a real privilege for us. We've been playing for the last seven or eight years. We've been playing two hundred shows a year, and really that's how you get it. You know, that's, and I think that's how you find out who you are. And um, I think we really been blessed to be able to do that and be able to eat and. All that this whole time. Oh yeah, good. We're, we're at the yeah. point where we can uh, we can order everybody's food order from I don't know one of uh, probably thirty restaurants. So he doesn't mean money wise. He means like we know their order. We know we know what they get from each restaurant. Can, yeah, it's, it's, read their brains it's, a little. Yeah. their stomachs. Yeah. It's pretty pretty intense. But. Well, guys, it's so nice to meet you, Baron Bo from Need to Breathe. I definitely encourage people to see you live because your music recorded is good and live it it comes to life and you expand things and and. I really, really like that. So uh, we're going to look for more from you guys and really for August 25th for the Outsiders. Can't wait for the new album. So thanks, guys, for stopping by. Appreciate thanks it. For